Today I'm going to be talking about cleaning your keyboard. Now I looked around before we talked about shooting this video and I really didn't run into this method of cleaning which in my opinion it's the quickest and also the most efficient. I mean if you use this method you're going to get that sucker clean. And also it doesn't involve popping all the keys off. You know they say take a picture so you remember where the X, the Y, and they, you know you don't have to worry about any of that because the keys are going to stay in the unit. We are going to be completely dismantling it and giving it a thorough cleaning. So, you know, a lot of people may think it's kind of silly to clean a keyboard. Well, me, you know, I don't like having to replace stuff all the time. I find something, I get used to it. It's a decent unit. And also, I slapped together my laptop. Now this here, it's got this, uh, there's a little mouse caddy and uh, keyboard cable runs through here real nice. I put a little tape over that. Keeps the cables out of my way. And I, I, I went to this uh, upholstery dumpster and got this old sofa cushion, this foam. Cut that down. Now I did smell a little farty when we got it. So I uh, slashed it open on the bottom and put uh, three and a half boxes of Febreze in there. So it's snuggle fresh now. But right now, like if you go to hit the control key, you hit it and... <clears throat> It will finally go down, you know, this is bad news. Some of those keys are sticking, and you'll run into that if you like to, you know, pour a chocolate shake in there, or, you know, pick your boogies, put them on the X key. So, basically, if you're going to try this at home, some of the stuff you're going to be needing, but not necessarily. I'm going to use an electric screwdriver, but you could go ahead and just use a standard Phillips or whatever type of fasteners that your keyboard might have, may have. I like to incorporate, uh, this is a plastic coffee cup, and then I throw all the screws in there. If there's different size screws, I'll maybe get more than one coffee cup. Don't really need that, but if you're a klutz like me, might not be too bad of an idea. Generic dishwashing detergent. you got to get the stuff from Aldi's. It's real viscous. It's real cheap. doesn't really do a good job, but don't want a real harsh detergent. I guess it doesn't really matter. You cut it with some water. Today I've got 91% isopropyl alcohol. I've seen some folks talking about, oh, don't use that, use this. I'm going with the 91. I've used different grades and it never affected the performance of the board. Probably end up using some paper towels. Uh, this is important. You're going to need a scrub brush and also some Q-tips. First step is to remove all the screws or fasteners from the unit. For the sake of cutting the time down, I pull them all out. You may want to utilize a butter knife. Something to help you pop this sucker open because sometimes they grab a little bit. Come on buddy. Doesn't want to play. Okay, here we go. So, I remove this sucker here. And now you have this. Give it a little shake of some of the stuff out of there. Well, we're going to get back to cleaning that one later. The first step is, this really isn't that necessary at this point, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this since we have it open. This keyboard's been modified. Originally it had a PS2 connection. I guess I must have cut in a USB because it looks like it's been hacked here a little bit. Some PD2 finger custom work. Now I'm going to take this lightsaber here. This is actually a uh, it's a curling iron, uh, but it's a mini hair dryer. It's got the curler piece here, aluminum thing with the bristle sticking out. Take the fasteners out of here and pop this off, and it makes a fantastic uh, a mini hair dryer. I use it. I use it all the time when I get done spray painting something. I'll hit it with this a little bit, tack it up, and then throw it in the oven for drying, or for uh, shrink boot. You know, shrink wrap. This love this thing. Look out for one of those at your local uh, your local resale store dumpster. That's where I obtained this one. So you just want to dry this off a little bit in here. Like I said, you don't necessarily need the mini hair dryer. You could air dry it or whatever you want to use. But for speed's sake, I'm going to use this sucker right in here. Looks like it's just about dried up. The next step <clears throat> involves the rubbing alcohol again. This is this, uh, this rubber piece in here. Basically, I'm just going to kind of tamp it in there and make sure I get, get it good and wet. Each one of those little cups. You can see it really isn't, this one really isn't that bad, this keyboard. It was 
cleaned not too long ago. So it depends when you open yours up what you see. If you want to go nuts and clean it, that's up to you. With this piece, I'm just going to wipe it down. It, it, it has been scrubbed. I've taken this one and used uh, soap and water and scrubbed it with a scrub brush and then rinsed the water off and then towel dry it followed by a quick run with our hair dryer. Okay, now for this part, we're just going to go ahead soak this sucker down. There's no electronic components in there. It's all plastic so you don't have to worry about anything malfunctioning. And then I'm just going to give it a liberal dousing of the generic dishwasher solvent. And this is the fun part. Okay. And then I'm going to hold this upside down. So the keys hang down. Maybe I can get in there a little bit. And remember the control, the left control key was the one that was sticking, so I'm going to concentrate a little extra effort in that area. That would be left control is over here. Like I said, this method is good because you don't have to remove each individual key to clean them. And the important thing is making sure you get this unit dry after you're done. So I'm going to rinse this soap off. I want to make sure you, you know, obviously get all the soap out of the unit. So we went ahead, we used some alcohol to clean in between our pressure tab, the, the sensor area. That looked pretty good. This thing, you know, it was already basically really clean. I just gave it a quick alcohol rub with some paper towel. We used the scrub brush to get all in here, both sides. And now, now the next step is basically, it's really a no-brainer. You just want to make sure that you uh, get the unit completely dry. You don't want any water bouncing around in there. So, uh, honestly, you know, I don't advise you doing this at home. I'm sure that you may end up... Uh, drinking the water that comes out of the keyboard and developing some sort of a internal rash more than likely you know you would probably use some sort of a flammable liquid to clean it and then plug it in while it's soaked with the liquid and bursts of causing severe you know burns about your head neck and face you know more than likely you just basically don't do this okay you're not qualified and I don't take any responsibility for you you need to just keep working with your filthy keyboard crumble up some Fritos and popcorn, throw them in there, and that's going to help. It's going to help you with your uh, your fancy WordPad document. What do they call that? The deluxe? What is it? Rich. So if you were going to attempt this at home, the object is to get it really dry. So you want to wait six to eight weeks, put this in the oven on 400 degrees, and then you probably want to leave, you know. Go down to uh, Farm and Fleet, you know, and you could compare price on bird seed or mouse traps, something like that. Put your finger in the trap. Well, we're going to go ahead and cut now because I'm going to be running this. This is my European 465 baud. Uh, it's a flamethrower, actually. It runs off of hydrogen and uh, carrot peels. Now, I do realize that in this newfangled, this breakneck pace of high technology world we live in, actually my daughter pointed out to me that this video is completely irrelevant because as we all know, you're watching this on your iPad right now. So there is, the keyboard is obsolete. It's completely, you know, now you use your iPad. So, uh, you know, just to demonstrate in theory, you know, if you were going to be cleaning your iPad, it's a little bit different of a process. You're going to need to get a couple of these, okay? This is how you clean your iPad, okay? And then if you have <coughs> if you have some more stubborn, let's say you were eating some peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and banana, and you've got some of that on your iPod, you're going to need to use like a, little bit, a little bit more elbow grease to remove that from your iPad. Get your iPad clean. You know, and then you want to always follow that up with a little little bit of that. Okay, there you go. You've got your iPad, and it's good as new. See, there you go. Steve Jobs approved. You know, I read that Wozniak came up with a solution to the battery drain and the uh, 
multitasking issues for the iPhone and that solution is you get two iPhones. You use one to talk to your buddy and the other one to do your apps and then maybe another one so you can throw it up against the wall. There you go. Okay, so we've got it all dried up. Now I'm going to take the uh, rubber insert. These little rubber springy guys, that's what keeps the keys popped up. So we've got that in place. Pop this sucker back together. So there you go. In all reality, this would take you about 10 minutes, you know. And the sticky key's not sticky anymore. It's real clean looking, looks good as new. Now let's give it the test. You can just check this out. Yep, there you go. Perfect, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoy your iPad. Hacking for fun with Petey.